I'm Tim Merrill. I work for BC Machining. I manage the shop floor, uh, managing the employees, and uh, complete most of the setups out on the shop floor as well. And uh, I'm Mike Driscoll. I'm the manufacturing engineer for BC Machining, and I do uh, all the CNC programming, keeping up with tooling inventory, um, making sure that information on the floor is correct. Previous to using machine metrics, uh, we didn't have a reliable way to monitor what was happening at the machines. Um, since implementing machine metrics, um, it's extremely easy to source the information that we're looking for uh, related to the machines. Uh, and it makes our process for uh, relaying it to our operators and catching our issues is probably improved by about 90%. Um, if the information is presented to you, you don't have to go hunt for it now that we have machine metrics implemented. As a shop, every bit of scrap we produce is, you know, a detriment to us. So our scrap, we are always looking to reduce our scrap rate. Uh, machine metrics really helps us uh, track it. Uh, we can see the specific operator that tracked it, and we can also make sure that it's being tracked. Um, to do that, we see what was entered into machine metrics, and then we compare it to the physical parts that we have. Um, it lets us know what operator did it um, and lets us know if we have a problem operator or if we have a problem process. Um, our star machines, uh, there are Swiss turn machines. They had a problem where they would break a tool and they would continue to run because they're an automated process. Um, Machine Metrics was able to be do a predictive um, tool breakage for us, and that has eliminated all scrap coming off of that machine. Uh, before, it would take an operator to walk over to it uh, on his own cord and visually verify that the tool hadn't failed. Um, and now, currently, we're in a situation where 100% of the time, uh, the tool detection has caught the tool on its first failure. So before we were using the uh, predictive tool technology, our operators would uh, have to walk to the machine at least once an hour and make sure the parts coming off are good. Um, in, the, in the past, when you'd have a broken tool, you'd walk over there and you're, you're kind of annoyed immediately because now you have to sort through all the parts to find the bad ones. And then you have to go into the machine and change the tool out and get it running again. And we had some instances in the past where we'd have a breakage right after we put a new tool in. So there's times where you'd have to change that out and do that whole process throughout an entire hour. Um, and now since we're using the predictive tool breakage technology, you get a notification on the screens or at the machine or on your phone that says, hey, the, the end mill's broken. So you go over there and you spend about five minutes, you replace the end mill and the machine's back up and running and you might've lost a total of seven to 10 minutes um, and the operator's back at the other machine keeping production running. Since we've started using the predictive tool break technology, um, we have seen our scrap rate reduced considerably. Our operators don't have to go over and tend to the machine um, at specific intervals of time. They only need to go to the machine when we've had a downtime reason, which they'll see on our machine metric screen or from the add-on light at the machine. Um, it's made it so our operators can spend much more time at other machines, uh, focusing on parts that need to be produced rather than checking on a part to see whether it's still good or whether it's not good. Um, so it's had a drastic uh, impact on our shop floor and uh, where our operators need to be and where their attention needs to be focused. One of the unintended consequences that we've seen from using the predictive tool uh, failure method um, is before when our tool would fail, it would continue to produce scrap parts and they would be mixed in with our good parts and we batched them out several hundred at a time. Um, before we would have to go through and manually sort all 100% of those parts for the tool failure. Now that we don't have bad parts being mixed in with our good parts, it is 100% eliminated our need to sort for tool failures. Previously on a worst case scenario tool breakage, we would get, I think our worst was two to three hours worth of the machine running producing scrap parts. Um, 
We also now have the opportunity that we will allow the machine to run when we leave. And we run three shifts now, so we're not using that much, but we can leave now with confidence knowing we're not gonna continually produce bad parts, that if we start to produce bad parts, the machine's gonna stop as well. Uh, once we plugged into the machine, I don't think it was five minutes and we were up and running. Wow, you said five minutes? Yeah, it's, you know, once the, once the cable was into the focus, we didn't really have any problems at all. You know, setting the control up, you sent the directions on how to, um, you know, what we needed to change in the control in order to communicate with the focus, and it, it went superb. I mean, no problem at all, not one. Uh, so to go back to the question of, you know, what, where did we spend the time? We, we spent the time mainly running the cable. Once we plugged them all in, you know, we bought that, um, excuse me, Graham, I'm going to forget the name, what you call it, but I think it's the edge device. Um, but you know, what we plugged everything into in order to, for it to communicate to, to you. Um, yeah, so we went from running the cable from the machine to that, to a, a, a router to a, not a router, I guess a, a switch basically yeah, really. Switch. So we went to a switch and then into the, um, into that ear system. And once we had everything plugged in, we literally, um, they had a little one page sheet. We went through that and, um, easy document, very easy to get through. Um, so again, five minutes, plugged everything in and we were able to communicate. And the same thing with the, the with the tablets, they basically come ready. You just, you plug it in, uh, set up your Wi-Fi protocol and, and it's all good, you know, it was good to go right from the beginning. So very, very simple, very easy and very quick. Immediately, you know, it was, we had the tablets immediately uh, the one thing that I had to do was um, that we wanted to do anyway was put the big screen TVs hanging on the walls in the shop so that we could get that whole, um, the, you know, see all the current little boxes for each machine. We were able then using the Google Chrome to connect that into the Wi-Fi to go to machine metrics and we have our, our screens showing. Um, yeah, we probably spent, what, two days running the cable. Uh, Mike helped me with that. We, we spent two days running the cable. And then I would say to go around to every machine, it was certainly less than one, one more day to have 10 machines communicating and working properly. Since using the predictive tool breakage technology uh, with machine metrics, our time savings um, at our Swiss turn machines has been monumental to say the least. Um, we've gone from potentially losing maybe a third of our shifts worth of parts and then spending 30 minutes to an hour um, sort, sorting through parts and finding the good ones and the, from the bad ones um, to now we're not wasting any time sorting through parts to find a good or a bad part. We're not, we're not losing time that the machine's running and not making good parts so for the most part when our machines are running we're making we're, we're being profitable because we're not making bad parts 